not as familiar with the AWARE program. This is a program that actually has been um, in the ecosystem for quite some time. And one of the signature uh, uh, things that the program does is provide prototyping resources for up and coming uh, uh, startup teams. So um, uh, KAS Automotive was one of the two recipients and um, in a, even in an adverse climate has been able to bring the, the, its project to fruition. So I'll turn it with that introduction, Amanda, I'll turn it over to you to tell us about um, yourself, your company and your project. So thank you so much for being here today. Awesome, thank you very much, I appreciate that. And um, I guess I wanna start by saying, I really appreciate the AWARE program for allowing us the opportunity to do this and, and picking us to be able to, to go ahead and go forward with our prototype. Let me see how tech savvy I am and how well I can screen share this PowerPoint for you guys. Well, it doesn't help if I go to it first, does it? So let's share screen, here we are. Okay, there we go. We'll make this full screen. Oh, so many things popping up at one time. So my co-founder, Kevin, is definitely the more tech savvy of the two of us. Have to be honest there. Okay, now, um, thumbs up, possibly, if you can see this big thing that says Cause Automotive Aware Proof of Concept. Is that what you see? Awesome. Wonderful. So, um, we kind of talked a little bit, but my name is Amanda Smith, and I am the COO and co-founder of Cos Automotive Incorporated. Um, and we were given a wonderful opportunity by the AWARE program to create a proof of concept prototype. So we are going to talk that through today. I do want to give you some background on our company and what we do and what we're interested in. Um, and just a small blurb about why we started. So this is all about, it's going to sound really cliche, guys, get ready. Saving lives, right? I know a lot of people say this for lots of different things, and there are lots of different ways to do that. Um, but this was actually inspired by an automotive accident that a friend of ours was in, um, and it was because she was not able to see something that was in front of the car in front of her as she was getting ready to transition off of a highway. Um, she is alive. That's the good news. The bad news was that at the time it was just really, really like a quote-unquote gnarly accident, so to speak. Um, so that's kind of where this all came from. And what we do is create vision systems that are going to give our customers the ability to not end up like this friend and to be able to see things that are obstructing their line of sight as they go forward in cars. Um, so that is a little bit about us. I am our COO and I'm kind of our human touch person. Um, and then we have our CEO Kevin Smith, who is more along the lines of tech and things like that. So that is us. And oh, goodness gracious, I have gone too far and I have too many buttons on my screen. Just a moment. I've gone really far. Here we go. Awesome. See me in tech. This is why I'm the human person. Anyway, um, so our objective for this particular project was to A, build our prototype. Um, and then test it and see what works and what does not work. Um, and then identify areas that we can change to make it work better. And then with that in mind, create our, well, honestly, um, continue to change and adapt our commercialization strategy so that we can move forward um, with our, with the customers that we have in mind, which I will tell you now are police departments and emergency vehicles as our point of entry. But we'll talk about that more as things go on. Um, let's go to our next slide. So this is, I'm gonna, I feel like all of you may know how to create a prototype already, but just to kind of give you a little bit more information about our approach to tackling this project, um, we created a schematic. Um, so that's our blueprint piece. And then from there, obviously, you know, you think about what materials you would need to be able to, to put all of this together. Um, and then you have to figure out who might have these materials so that you can put this together. That's the part that got a little interesting for us with all of these, these changes out in the world that we're all dealing with. Um, from there, once we were able to get all of our supplies in order, we were able to assemble our prototype um, and put it on our car, which was really exciting and really 
really, really cool. Um, and then go out and drive around in it and test it and see what works, see what we like. Um, and then from there, figure out how we can fix the things that we didn't like and how we can keep doing and make better the things that we did like. Um, and then from there, planning how are we going to, you know, secure different pilot programs and things like that with what we have. So that was our plan. And I would say that, you know, things went pretty well with that. We had four different milestones that we were looking for, which was to build, to test, and then to identify our areas for improvement. And of course, to move on with how we were going to get this thing to market, which we're still in the process of doing. Here is our results page. This is like the exciting part for me. Um, we have created a, a kind of a Gen 1 proof of concept prototype thing before this, but this was way prettier because we had more resources to be able to do that. Um, so thank you again, Aware, for that. Um, but this is what it looks like if you see, I wonder if you can see my mouse. I think you can. So if you look at this bottom screen, this is what this looks like on the inside of your car. So we've got two different displays here, um, one on the left and one on the right. The left side is going to show you what is coming through a camera that you can see attached to the mirror here in this, this um, middle picture. Um, and so the left side is going to show you what's coming through that left input device and the right side is gonna show you what's coming through the right input device. And what that does is allow you to see in front of things that might be in front of you that might be bigger than you. Um, so this was kind of the, the end product for us. And I don't, we were really happy about it because we, we definitely had to make some changes as we were doing this. And although I think when we go into things sometimes as entrepreneurs and as people who are building things, we want it to go exactly the way that we want it to. Um, and you make, you see those, those pivot points and you're like, ah, I don't really want to change this because I thought it was perfect before, but sometimes the pivots work out to be even better than what you, you had originally expected. So we're really, really happy with what we came out with with this. So those are the three pictures. That last one up in the right corner is just another side view so that you can see from another angle what this looks like. And that's actually the camera that you're seeing that's attached to the vehicle there. Moving forward, what did we learn? Um, I'm actually gonna start with what did not go well and end with what went well, because I like to end things kind of on a positive note. Uh, so the things that did not go well for us were, like I mentioned, those design pivots that we had to make um, so one of the things that we ran into was with, with this whole COVID thing, um, some supply chain issues and some issues with getting people to be able to ship things to us. So we had proposed, um, certain vendors and had to change vendors or had to change different products and things like that, that they were able to, to offer us just with the, the differences with everything that's going on right now. Um, so with that being said, those design pivots can sometimes be a little painful in the beginning. Um, but like I said, we they actually worked out really, really well for us. Um, I think they made things a little bit more sleek. Cameras got, um, uh, they had different attachments with the way that we could attach things to vehicles that actually provided for less stuff, less eyesore stuff around the camera that would be attached to the car. It also, um, gave us, we ended up with different displays, but we were able to attach those displays in a completely different way than what we had originally envisioned. So just making things more sleek, and I think that's going to work really well for us as we go through to do demonstrations with different customers that we have identified. So I think that's great. Um, so that's the, the what did not go well. What did go well, it worked. That's always good when you make a prototype. You want to see that it worked, and it works. And I mean, we've, we've done this and we kind of figured that it would and we had seen it when we tried it the last time it, it does work, but this works even better because we have better equipment and we have um, just, it's just better stuff. You know, it, everything works better, there's less lag, like it's, it's great, it's really great. Um, so we're really, really excited about that. Um, yeah, that's technology improvements, isn't it? <laughs> so, so those are the things that went well for us. Um, let's see, let's move forward a little bit. So here are our next steps. Um, for us, our commercialization strategy involves pilot programs with emergency um, responders. So police officers were looking at 
part, like that's our kind of our main sector, but we're also interested in, in you know, ambulances and things like that. Um, with that being said, we'd like to begin those pilot programs. And I think that with the prototype that we have now, it's very, it's very sleek and eye catching. And so we really think that it'll be able to, to help us persuade those customers to get those pilot programs up and running, provided this COVID thing is over because, you know, social distancing makes it a little difficult to get into a car and ride around with someone. Uh, <laughs> but we are confident that we'll be able to do that as soon as all of these restrictions are lifted and we can do things safely. Um, so we want to continue customer validation now that we have this to show people, make sure this is what it is that they're looking for, what you know, does it do what we, we said it would do? Um, does it do what they want us to make it do, et cetera? Um, and then we're going to continue to determine that that uh, minimum viable product um, with our product market fit and make sure that this is still something that we can work with, which we believe that it is. Um, and I have a screen in front of my last bubble there. And then from there, we're looking to commercialize our technology. Um, hopefully you don't see this black line that just popped up on my screen. Okay, um, but we're looking to take it from, from our um, emergency responders out into the larger public, but we're really looking at those responders as being our recommenders, um, recommending not only to you know each other, but, but even across that, because every police officer that you talk to is also a civilian sometimes. Um, so that's kind of how we're looking to, to bridge that gap between that smaller sector that we're interested in right now and hopefully moving on from there as things go forward. Um, that is us. Thank you. This is our, our emblem here. And then Kevin Smith, you all are very, very familiar with and Amanda Smith is me. I really appreciate the time that you all offered us to be able to present this and the fact that, you know, you guys were willing to allow us to participate in the AWARE program. We just really appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to create something and, and talk to you guys. Awesome. Um, questions, if you have any, I would love them. Let's see, let me stop the screen share really quickly. Um, that is paused. Sorry, I do definitely talk myself through these things. Pausing, oh, there we go. No, yes, stop. Got it. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Amanda. Questions? Oh, thank you, Laura, for the congratulations. Yes, super important milestone for us. We're like, we're really over the moon, to be honest with you. Like, it, it really couldn't have been better. And I think it, it was really a journey, to be honest, as far as, as having to make changes and then realizing that those changes were actually great changes. So, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Alex, I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot. I see Laura and I had the same thought at the same time. So um, but Laura's question was directly to you, Amanda. How did working with Alex help you advance to this important step? And then I'd love to hear Alex weigh in too. Okay. So first of all, I want to say that Alex has been like awesome. Why has Alex been awesome? Because he's been kind of in our corner as far as giving us confidence when things don't necessarily go the way that you expected them to in the first place. Um, so that's always, it's really good to have someone like that. And then he also just has a kind of a language that we don't speak because he is an engineer and, and Kevin is Kevin is in the sciences, um, specifically with a biology degree. I am in the French department. I have no engineering language to me at all, at all. So he's really been helping us with, with the actual idea of building and how that works and anything that involves engineering has been kind of his lane. So he's been a really great resource for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this is my first time actually meeting Amanda, but I meet with Kevin pretty darn regularly. And um, out of the enormous amount of startups I've worked with over the years, I will say that uh, Kevin and Amanda are some of the most agile and receptive startups that I've ever worked with. Uh, and they've been extraordinarily receptive to, you know, everyone's heard me uh, drone on endlessly about lean prototyping and, you know, figure out, you know, exactly what features you need to bring the benefit. And they've really been um, receptive to that, which is just awesome to see. 
I've worked with quite a few startups who have not, and it gets very trying. I have to jump off in just a second, but I'd say it's a very impressive looking prototype. Looks like you're making great progress. The uh, question I have is, um, you know, what else is out there? My understanding, I've been reading a little bit and I talked to Kevin a little bit about Nissan is doing some stuff with radar um, to see whether the car, the second car in front of you is slowing down or something like that. Are you um, familiar with um, what other kind of technologies um, others are bringing to market to try to do what you're doing? Yes, so Nissan is one of them. I'm not completely sure how well that product has, has I've seen one or two commercials from them. So I'm kind of wondering where they are in that space and, and whether or not they're, they're continuing or how that's going. Um, but there are others out there too. There's BMW, they have a product that, that does not do the same thing, but is kind of in the same realm of considering some of these different challenges that people have when they're moving forward and things like that. Um, there is Bosch, um, who is looking at some different things. Continental AG is a big one um, that we've actually kind of looked at and, and actually we've, we've talked to them a few times too. Um, so, so there are others out there. Um, the good thing about that for us, or as far as we're concerned is, is A, if people are looking at it, for us that means, okay, this is a viable lane to travel in because there are other people that are looking in the same direction. Um, on the other hand, we feel like our stuff is better. I know that sounds a little, <laughs> a little um, um, cocky, maybe, but but we definitely we think that that we have a superior product to theirs because our stuff does some things. That are, are you able to? You know, where are you in the patent process? Ah, we're still working on that. It's still alive. So, <laughs> so we're 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 moving forward. So, um, we do have a patent under our belt. Not exactly. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I got to take this call. So oh, thanks, okay. sorry, but yeah, very impressive. Thank you, I appreciate it, Tom. All right, bye. If there are other questions, you know, I'm, I'm here. If not, that's okay too, don't feel pressed. Um, to yeah, hi, Amanda, I have a question, but my question would be, what would be your message to undergraduate students with some ideas? Because in my introduction, I forgot to mention that I'm also working with a Design for America student-run organization. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to prototyping, it's an, an issue <laughs> for them. So what would be your message to all my students? You know, I think, um, well, for one, I want to mention, I actually do things with, with undergraduate students on the campus, too. I teach a, a professional development and leadership course. So this is kind of kind of up my alley, I guess, in a way. Um, I think the big thing that I would do, or say, is probably piggyback off of what Alex said about that lean prototype. We want to make sure that, you know, you're not wasting the resources that you have and that you're coming up with what really is a minimum viable product that's going to fit with what people are looking for and make sure that it's what people are actually looking for. Customer discovery is really important. Um, so, I mean, there's no point in making something people don't want. So, so make sure that the people want it beforehand. Um, if they have the opportunity to do customer discovery, um, it's a great idea. It's a great, great idea to be able to do it. And I know, um, I'm not sure if you're at UIUC or not, but Enterprise Works has some really great resources as far as um, learning how to do customer discovery, i -Corps is is here and functioning very, very well. So that is probably what I think I would say. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Awesome question. Amanda, I think uh, we are over, a little bit over time, so I want to be respectful, but wanted to ask you, do you have plans to pursue SBIR funding or apply for an SBIR program? So that is something that we are considering um, currently. So we're kind of in the works of talking that through and talking through what we think would be the, the best next step um, going forward as far as how we can, you know, get some more funding and put this funding that we had to, to good use to, to move forward with our, with our plans. Yeah. So it's definitely on our mind. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else have any last questions? I don't see everybody, but well, thank you so much for uh, being here today and providing us with this presentation and we're 
um, looking forward to seeing what you do next and don't you know that we are here for you guys and uh, look forward to continuing this is not the end this is really the beginning moving forward so yeah, thank you thank you for giving us this opportunity it was it was awesome we love the the fact that we were able to create a prototype and that we were able to present it so like you guys have been in our corner this entire time and we really appreciate that so thank you <laughs>